Hi, this is Roseanne from the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Program. So I'm sitting in for James um, today. I am a coach, an enrollment coach, and a client journey coach <laughs> with the program. And I like to say that I have one of the best jobs in the world because I get to watch people transform their lives inside uh, 90 days. Today, uh, we have with us Shane Tucker, who is 36 years old as of a few days ago. Um, he's got a very interesting background that we get to talk about. He is actually the owner of a tequila company. He is the owner of a construction company in um, Dallas. He is from the Gold Coast and Australia, as you will soon know when he speaks. <laughs> and uh, most interestingly, interestingly enough, uh, for me anyway, he is part, he is a professional race car driver, drag race car driver. He was just uh, teaching me about the difference in these things. <laughs> Member of the NHRA, which is the largest professional motorsport or, um, organization in the world. Did I get that right, Shane? You did indeed. Okay. Um, Shane also is the father of two children, ages 11 and two, and has a fiance. So we are just going to start right in with Shane. Welcome, Shane. Hey, Roseanne. Thanks for having me. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's so good to have you because I have tons and tons of questions to ask. <laughs> yeah, it's been a, a long journey. I'm sure we've got plenty to talk about. Yeah, let's start with... Let's just start with race car driving. Where did that <laughs> that come from? So I guess uh, my father um, raced back in the day, I guess, from when he was 17 years old. So I guess as a kid, I just was brought up in it. It was around it my whole life from when I was a baby. And then um, from a, I guess, from a professional level, when I was about 19, I started driving our team race car and he, he retired and uh, had an opportunity to drive for a team in the US when I was 20. So I spent a couple of years in the United States uh, trying to get a full-time ride. But unfortunately, I think that was about 2008, 2009, the whole world collapsed. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember that. Point, and uh, ended up coming home. Uh, continued my racing in Australia. But uh, I, had a, I, guess, I guess I had a goal when I came back. I had a little bit of unfinished business. And I was uh, of the opinion if I was going to get a ride in the US, then I sort of had to had to start a business over there myself. So um, I guess I started a business in Australia first, built our construction company up to about 100 odd employees in Australia. And then uh, there was an opportunity to, uh, to get back and race in America in 2014. And uh, as that happened, um, we were at a race in, uh, in, I think it was Indianapolis. And I had an email back at our sales team in Australia about, um, from an architect firm in Dallas and uh, suggested that if there was an opportunity to work in the US, then Dallas was a thriving market and maybe we need to look into it. So um, I looked in a little bit further into the business side of it and set up a, set up a business, uh, exactly the same business what we do in Australia over in Dallas. And uh, the, uh, the numbers lined up and everything else. And uh, I guess from then on, it was, uh, it was all go. And um, my business in the US now is um, my uh, main focus Right now, I don't do any work in Australia anymore because the market's so strong over in Dallas. And um, yeah, built a built a quite a uh, a um, successful construction company in Dallas. We've got about eighty five employees over there. And um, off the back of that, uh, I continued my racing on the side in a part time basis. And uh, off the back of that, I um, got educated on ultra premium tequila uh, from my employee to our uh, majority of them are from Mexico, uh -huh. so family and families and whatnot, send them, you know, blank label tequila. And anyone who's been to Mexico understand it's uh, very ingrained in their culture, tequila. And um, I ended up getting introduced to it by our local employees and uh, fell in love with it and figured if there's an opportunity to, um, to create a brand and take it to Australia and introduce Australians a little bit to uh, what ultra premium tequila is, then it might be a good opportunity. So um, we did that and kicked that off in 2019. We've been going about a year now. And wow. um, my job now, um, now I'm based in Australia, my nine to five job is uh, selling liquor, selling my brand. 
So. Well, there's a good trans transition point about how you came to how do you came to uh, the decision that maybe you ought to uh, take alcohol out of your life for a little bit. Tell me about what was happening there on the drinking side of your life. I mean, I've always been a a fairly um, I guess outgoing person. I like to be the life of the party a little bit. I like to organize you know, get togethers with friends and family. And, um, you know, I want to make sure that everyone has a good time and enjoys himself. And I just, I'm that, I'm that guy. Whenever there's something going on, that's me. I, I organize it, put everything on, invite everyone around and we have a good time. So um, I guess I look at my business ventures the same way. I, I, I'm extremely ambitious. Um, I would like to one day think that, hope that I could, um, you know, create a lifestyle for my family and friends that, we really don't have to think too much about, you know, the day-to-day -day stuff and, and really can enjoy enjoy life and at its, you know, finest and purest and and probably um, enjoy it on our terms, I guess. And unfortunately, in today's day and age, we're so driven by money because money is what, um, you know, keeps us ticking over. It's what puts food on the table. Um, it's, uh, it's, you know, it can consume your life. And I guess sometimes a byproduct of, of that is – is you turn to drinking to solve some of these issues. So um, you mean the stress, the stress of yeah, a little bit, which is obviously something I learned, which is a whole lot of bullshit. Um, <laughs> to be honest, but um, but yeah, I just I I guess I was a fairly um, social drinker, and then um, I was in the industry every day. So you're introducing your product to someone, and they're like, "Oh, you're going to have one with me?" And sure, <laughs> I'll, have, I'll have a try. Not that I don't know what the taste of it is like, but by the end of the day, you've had half a dozen shots, and yeah, it just starts to uh, starts to consume your life. And um, there was a point there that we were looking at some um, external investment, and I felt that uh, my position as the founder was as a leader that I need to be the best version of me um, that I can be to to uh, to take this thing forward and if I've got, I can, I, can, I, can, I can handle losing my own money on an investment, but when other people put their own money in, then that's a whole different kettle of fish. I, I, really, um, I really believe that I need to be absolutely on my game 24-7, 365 to really make sure that there's no stone unturned if we want to make this thing successful. And one of those things I, I felt was uh, cutting out the drinking. Right. Well, why, um, it, it probably had gotten to a point where, it wasn't as easy as you thought doing it on your own. I mean, why, why get some coaching around it? Was it, why, what? Yeah, that's actually a good question. So I, I've, I'm a fairly strong minded person, competitive and whatnot. If someone says you're not drinking for 90 days, you know, you can't do it. Obviously I'm going to say, well, yeah, I can. And I won't let that beat me. The, the, the issue I had was beyond 90 days. I want to do really find out, the science or process behind quitting drinking for good um, or at least be in a position where you can say, look, mm, does it serve me better? You know, give me a reason to, and then I will. So I haven't come across that reason uh, yet. So I, I guess uh, between the coaching from, from everyone and the support that, that everyone's been given through this 90 day program, it's nothing short of incredible. Um, you know, where, where I've come to where I am. Um, I looked at the people that I was chatting to throughout my journey as superheroes thinking how can they, <laughs> how can these men and women do this um, and really take control of their life and, and not look at alcohol as being a celebratory moment. Um, I was talking to someone the other day and where I got a, I guess building a house at the moment is probably a fairly big achievement in your life. And um my fiance said, are we going to have a drink after it? And um, not that she was forcing it. She said, would you have a drink, you know, when we move in? And I said, well, no, I'll have a soda water. Um, I think I want to celebrate, you know, obviously this achievement. I think the best way to celebrate that is to stay alcohol free as well. So, Right. Well, let's go back, though, to um, that decision because alcohol was, it was really, obviously, you, you identified it as a force that was, 
getting in the way. I think you mentioned to me that maybe it, it affected your relationship with your fiance, maybe. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, I guess everyone's sort of got, call it an anchor um, or, a, you know, a light bulb moment in their life when that sort of switches um, and gives them probably some clarity behind change. And um, I was having, you know, constant battles with my fiance um, about, you know, my drinking and everything else. And my personality probably was, was changing dramatically. Um, and my kids would be um, probably a little distant because every time they wanted to do something, I probably wasn't there for them as much as I should have. And um, I had a particular moment on a Monday where I had a drink and then um, I ended up was fighting with my fiance and I had the task of looking after my little four-year-old who, uh, who if anyone's got kids understand that four-year-olds don't generally understand what a hangover is. So, um, so I was feeling sorry for myself. And um, we got in a conversation and she knew I was, I was fairly upset. She said, what's wrong, daddy? And I said, um, I said I'm just unhealthy um, and I want to fix it. And anyway, so she toddles off over to the fridge and she brings back two bananas. And she said to me, um, she said, daddy, eat these, please. She goes, these are healthy. And um, it got me fairly upset. And um, I, uh, I started to tear up and she started to cry and she said to me, um, she said, what's wrong, Daddy? I said, oh, look, I just want to be able to fix it. And, um, and her words were, well, Daddy, you can fix anything. Hmm. So from that moment, a light switch flicked on and I thought, well, you know what? If my four-year-old can identify that there's an issue and, and I can't fix it myself, then something seriously needs to be done here. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's an anchor point for me and that's what I always revert back to. I made a promise to my kid uh, and kids and fiancé that, I need to get some help. And um, yeah, here we are. Yeah. You know, and the funny th thing is, is um, it wasn't till the end of your journey that I was told that you were this professional um, drag race driver. And so I did a little uh, Google search and your face came up and I'm like, wait, that can't be you because you're puffy, right? Yeah. Yep. So what was going on with your health? I mean, were you having any health issues? No, no health issues. I mean, I've always been fairly, um, fairly consistent with my training. Um, I like to train at the gym five to six times a week. Um, and I guess I was getting to a point where you're training to maintain and you're not making any gains. Mm -hmm. um, you know, your Friday, you start to come good and then you go out and you have drinks on the weekend and come Monday, you're battling it to get back to where you felt on the Friday before. Um, and it just was going nowhere. So um, I, want, I, I was always thinking to myself, I wonder what it'd feel like, you know, to feel like you're at your best and you're at your peak. And um, yeah, I guess now it's I look back and if I was training beside my old former self, there's no, no way in the world you'd be able to keep up. Um, yeah. And I guess continuing to improve and, and educate myself on, on uh, what's good for my body. I guess now I, I'm pretty, um, pretty cautious about what I, what I put into my body. Cause I think it's, uh, I think it's fairly important to stay healthy. And I guess it's like fuel for your car. You put in bad fuel and it's probably going to run bad. You put in good fuel, it's going to run good. So right. um, as simple as that is. Um, so yeah, I, I've, I've definitely turned my focus on to do staying active and healthy and, um, New Year's Day was probably a good example. Of, typically, I'd be curled over with an extreme hangover on New Year's Day. And this year, I ran a half marathon. I ran 21 Ks. So. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So we got the relationship part. We got the health part. Um, how? I mean, it had to be affecting your abilities at work. You, you mentioned, you kind of refer to that, but how were you seeing now that you can look in the rear view mirror, how it was affecting all of your abilities and operating as a call it CEO entrepreneur? <laughs> yeah, I guess um, you always think when you're in that moment, you think that, you know, you're operating fine. You, know, you think <laughs> yep, I've got this, I've got everything going, I'm, you know, but then I guess take yourself out of that and you look back on it you look at it 
there was some trigger points what typically was a quite a simple task to try and you know resolve you look at the way you were before and, and everything became a little overwhelming so um yeah I, I, I guess it's sort of a it's a struggle um day to day when when you're not operating 100 percent like when you're clear headed and clear minded the way I am now, you get back what you put in. And there's, it's, it's no coincidence that what's, what's happened with myself and um, my business in the last 12 to 14 weeks is a byproduct of not drinking and being alcohol free. Um, yeah, I've got a merger happening with my company in the U S um, and my tequila company is, is, is extremely um, busy at the moment and it's really starting to take off for a, for a, for a startup business. I'm extremely proud of where it is. Um, and, uh, and yeah, from on a, on a racing side of it, that's something that I'm going to experience in the next I know, I can't time. wait to see you. <laughs> uh, I'm going to see how I perform um, from a alcohol free state. And, uh, and I'm sure it's going to be, I'm sure it's going to be surprisingly, surprisingly different from, from when I was drinking alcohol before. Right. And, you know, one of the things that's hard for me as an enrollment coach is to help people understand the calmness and the clarity that you're talking about. Like, so when we, we still have the same problems being thrown at, at us, right? But yeah. the way we process it and handle it and refer it off, it's just, you find there's just a lot less stress, a lot easier to make decisions. <clears throat> yeah, 100%. I mean, as I said before, they just what would normally be a simple task seemed like it was so overwhelming. You, now it's just, I mean, everything seems so simple, uh, yet uh, I guess clear for you to for you to tackle. So you know, tasks and everything else. And I guess you're very creative. You 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 find that you know there's there's things within your mind that start open up. I'm a creative person. I guess I'm a graphic designer. So my hand, my part within the business on the tequila side is, is the marketing side and the branding side of things and, and the ideas and stuff that you start to come up with. You think to yourself, where did that come from? So um, yeah, it's uh, it's, it's quite amazing what the human brain and body can do when, uh, when you actually pay attention to what it needs. Right. Exactly. So how, what was happening inside the coaching program that really helped you get over this hump uh, of, you know, going, yeah, this is worth it. Because what we do try and achieve, and this is was part of my intro, is, you know, if you can um, practice what we preach, not preach, but teach inside Project 90, you should build enough wins and gains to be able to make a decision for yourself. Do I want to continue this alcohol-free journey? Do I have more gains, you know, than losses? And it, I think you're referring to it too. We don't necessarily go, well, let's make it a lifetime decision. That's too much for your brain. So we like to do it maybe, you know, 90 days at a time or for people in the 30-day program, 30 days at a time to keep. But what, what helps you um, yeah, so I guess hearing other people's stories that were probably a little further down their journey um, and the challenges they faced and I guess the two-week mark, I might be able to uh, relate to what they were saying, a four-week mark, and it just gave you hope that it does get easier um, and it does get, well, when I say easier, easier, you're, you're in control more. Um, you're always going to have challenges, but... I guess, yeah, having the support around you of people that were in the same same boat as you um, was extremely important. Um, and just understanding the tools that we need to be able to make these decisions um, was extremely important for me. I wanted to be able to go, okay, well, you know, does it serve me better? And I'm being a um, business owner, I like to weigh up pros and cons all the time and it's exactly the same as this. I love to be healthy. I love to keep fit. I love to uh, wake up in the morning feeling fresh. I love to be present with my family. Um, on the other side, I love the feeling of euphoria that you might get from drinking alcohol. Um, that's about it. 
So you look at it, it's five to one. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to see what I'm leading to. So um, that was the way I sort of simplified and broke it down. Um, what's what if it if it, the pros don't outweigh it, if the pros don't outweigh the cons, then obviously I'm just going to stick to what I'm doing. And uh, Kevin made a good comment he, uh, whenever someone asked them about you know when are you in drink then? Well, when it stops feeling good. So right. when's that? And you've been able to be a big inspiration um, for your own friends, right? Because you you explained in that uh, kind of last meeting um, that because of your journey, several of your friends have been kind of following suit. Tell, tell us what you shared in that meeting. Yeah, I guess, um, I mean, my fiance told me that I was a fairly influential or powerful person within our group of friends, tight-knit friends. I didn't really think too much of it, but um, I guess when you start something like this, there's probably an element of doubt between your friends to say, oh, well, you know, we'll see what happens after 90 days or we'll see if he makes the 90 days or anything like that, and which is all fine. I mean, I can take all that. I, I, uh, I guess once what I wanted to do was have the runs on the board um, beforehand and then look back and go, okay, well, you know, if I can do it, because I was like the epitome of party boy. So they look at me going, if Shane can do it, then shit, anyone can do it. Right. So um, once I got there, I guess I wanted to prove, you know, that that it was possible. And and I guess off the back of that, a lot of my friends, probably half a dozen of my friends have decided that they're going to stop drinking for 90 days. Um, <laughs> I, I, which I'm, I'm extremely excited and proud for. Um, and I, I, every time they ask me how I do it, I flick James's podcast over and I said, look, guys, do yourself a favor, have a listen to this. Um, it's not easy without help. Um, and you, you have to be committed and you have to want to yourself. You really have to be honest to yourself. The first thing I did is I said to myself in the car before I actually signed up, stop kidding yourself and stop bullshitting to yourself. You have to want to do it. If you do not want to do it, you're going to waste your time, energy, and money. You yeah. have to yourself want to do it and want to make a change. Yeah, we, we I don't know if you got this concept um, inside Project 90. I, I actually got it after. Um, but there's a difference between 100% all in is a breeze, 99% is a bitch. <laughs> Once once you let, I mean, because it's not all rainbows and kittens, like we like to say. Um, especially at the beginning when there's um, triggers and cravings and, you know, we just don't know what to do with it. But if that 1% starts creeping in, it makes it so much more difficult. Um, if, you, if you got your eye on the prize, which is simply just 90 days, all I want is the time and the, and the space to figure out what it feels like at 90 days. And that's a short thing, right? That's why we do 90 days. I think definitely when you, as you, as the, the weeks start ticking off and you get to probably your sixth or seventh week, maybe longer, maybe, you know, eighth or ninth, um, Kevin made mention about this and I really sort of honed in on it. He said, look, now it's time to really turn it on. I think that's important for people to hear because they're always going to be thinking, well, okay, is this as good as it gets? Is this as good as, if this is as good as it gets, maybe I'm going to go back to what I was. Well, no, it's up to you to be able to push through the boundaries and 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 continue to see what's on the other side of it. I think that's one thing that you really need to be important on. Oh, okay, well, what's, what's next beyond 90 days and keep planning forward and making sure that you obtain those goals. What did um, that mean? I, what did that mean to you when Kevin challenged you with that? Where were you in your headspace and where did you want to go and what helped? I guess I was just like, okay, well, this is great. I'm getting through this and I'm ticking the weeks off and whatnot. You know, but what happens when the 90 days is up? Do I start thinking about alcohol again or, or do I go down another route and go, okay, well, what's beyond 90 days? What, what, uh, what for me, what, what can I continue to do um, to stay, you know, on track? And I think I decided to shift my focus again to, um, fitness and health. Um, so I've decided to make 
challenges for myself. I'm going to run a triathlon in May. And I just think it's important to set those, set those goals for yourself and something to look forward to too. Um, you know, before uh, you were always looking forward to the next weekend when you're drinking. I mean, that's what, that's not a, not a real, I guess, uh, ambitious goal. I don't think, I think you need to look <laughs> Bigger than, I know, you know in retrospect but it seems so fun at the time didn't it <laughs> <laughs> it does seem so fun it does seem so uh, well okay so um you're here on the other side of 90 days i forgot to ask you your uh, 108 day well you said you forgot your counting but 108 days today yeah 100 about 108 days roughly yeah, um, it's nice when we don't count. I literally just count for the purpose that I'm a coach and people like to know where I am. Um, yep. But it, it does begin to be irrelevant to your decision. It's not like collecting a, you know, a, a reward. It's just living a reward. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So you have another um, site in mind too that we briefly talked about and that's getting into racing again so i'm i'm excited to hear about this is this definite or a plan yeah look if i uh if i get to the us um for the merger with my business then there's a race at the beginning of the year for uh down in florida gainesville uh race which is i think about the 12th 13th 14th of may somewhere around i oh, sorry of march somewhere around there um, and I'd like to jump back in a car again and um, and try my skills, see if I don't, see if I can still remember how to do it, and um, I guess try my skills this time, very clear headed and clear minded. My reaction and everything else is so much quicker, and our sport relies heavily on your reaction. Um, you, uh, it's it's uh, yeah, it's very it's won and lost by thousands of a second. So that's one thing I've noticed that um, being alcohol free is you're so sharp. And, uh, and that's something I'm, I'm keen to, to put into practice. Right. Well, the evidence that we've been discussing in terms of relationships, um, health, more clarity at work, I'm assuming they are definitely going to transfer into race car, drag racing, right? Well, I'm, like, I'm hoping so because I've always, already thought about what I'm going to do when I celebrate a win. Obviously, it's not going to be with champagne. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, is there a lot of drinking in that industry, in the in the racing industry, or do you think when people are? I guess post race, yeah, there probably is. Like, you go back to your hotel after qualifying, and you might have a drink at the bar. Um, you know, you go back the end of the race. You know, if you do well in the race, you might have a beer. Um, it's like in everyday life; it's how it consumes us. Um, you go to dinner, you might have a drink. So, yeah, I mean. I think it is. I think it does. I mean, it's, it's, it's as prominent in a professional sport as it is, as it is, um, I guess in everyday life, I think, um, it's just a social way of connecting with, with your peers as well. Um, I guess probably on a rate on a race night, uh, if you're going into race day, you, you're definitely not going to have a drink, but, um, you know, it's that slow drip, like James said. It's that slow drip. No matter if you start on Wednesday and you're clear-headed by fr- by fr- by Sunday, there's the damage that's done in between that. So right, right. Um, we've talked about so many areas that have improved over just a hundred days or a hundred plus days. Um, is there anything else that you can think of that you want to share with people about living this alcohol-free life? I mean, you are just really, especially your age, I have to say, because a lot of um, Project 90, and we definitely uh, work with people in their 30s and early 30s, but the more you climb up the ladder in age, I think the more prevalent <laughs> you know, um, the, uh, issue of, yep, we need some coaching, you know, uh, is there I think, other... Go ahead. I think probably the biggest thing that I, if any, any message that I can give for anyone who's thinking about it is, um, I not, not saying I'm perfect or anything, but you look at the facts, liquor industry, young, uh, I've got a fairly, fairly extensive social group with with friends and love to party a lot. Um, they're around at twenty four seven, and still 
had the ability to get through it, then, um, you know, anyone, anyone's capable of doing it. Um, you know, you just can't make excuses. Don't start tomorrow. Don't start Monday. If you're ready to do it, just jump in and do it. And, um, and I think uh, once you get into it and you, you, you see it through, you realise that there's more to life than uh, turn into a bottle. Right. And that's what I think um, we're kind of playing with our mantra here at the Alcohol Free Lifestyle. And I like our most recent um, thing that says, um, you know, the Alcohol Free Lifestyle, it's a movement. Um, and that's what people need to believe because a lot of people believe they're they're stuck instead of realizing they could be a leader in this movement, um, like you. I mean, your friends are following your example, right? And um, it's uh, changing changing the world one alcohol-free life at a time. You know, you're out there explaining the benefits and I'm sure you're going to be inspiring so many other people, especially because you're only 36 years old. I just think that's really admirable. Um, yeah, thank you. And uh, and I couldn't have done it without all the, the support around me that I've had over the last 90 days and beyond. I mean, um, hearing everyone's stories and, and uh, the challenges that they face, I mean, it, not everyone is going to have the same uh, path and journey. Um, I think it's just important to support one another around it. And, you know, if you've got some advice, share it. I mean, uh, if you're feeling that you, you've got challenges coming up, let them know. I'm sure there's an answer out there from everyone else because we've all been through it. Yeah, and I think that's the other thing about um, this alcohol habit loop that we talk about. It's a very lonely loop in your mind if you don't share it with other people, right? And I think that's what you're referring to is we all have this loop in our brain thinking we're the only ones having the loop when every other friend we have is having that same thought. <laughs> and uh, that model in the beginning, you're like, what am I doing? Oh, I've got this event coming up. I'm nervous. I, I want to make sure I fit in. You know, there's always that, that element of doubt. Okay. Am I going to feel uncomfortable? Well, in the end, no one gives a shit. No <laughs> one gives a shit if you're not drinking. Yeah. They may, I found that at first they wonder if you're going to judge them. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. They don't care if you're drinking, but they care if you're going to judge them about drinking. Right. Yeah. But then when you like love them unconditionally, you know, it's like to me, like, oh, I don't care. This was just wasn't working for me. And yeah, um what you guys like, do. Yeah, and then they're like, ah, oh, come on, let's let's go to the bar, you know, and it doesn't matter. But there is an uncomfortable moment, and that's a lot of what we coach as well. Is how do I'll, I sell I'll, sell, I'll sell it to them all day long. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's just uh yeah, exactly. So, um, well, Shane, is there any last thoughts you'd like to share with people before we sign on? Oh, look, I think, um, I think we had most things covered, but, uh, I guess just reiterating that, you know, uh, if I, if I, I could give any advice, definitely, definitely, definitely jump into it and make sure you're hundred percent committed. Yeah, I agree. Shane, it's been great to go through this process with you and to be able to interview you and, um, I think that I may be, you need to come in, we use a, a platform in Project 90 called Marco Polo. So now that you're in the Marco Polo alumni, you need to announce to us when you're racing because I might become a new fan. <laughs> Ooh, I will, uh, I'll definitely, when it's locked in, I'll let you guys know. Yeah, yeah. So uh, good luck to you and all of your endeavors and thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks for listening to the Alcohol-Free Lifestyle Podcast. I want to load you up with some free stuff right now. So if you want to go to jameswanick.com slash guide, I will send you my Quit Alcohol Guide, which has helped six-figure entrepreneurs and top professionals reduce or quit drinking. You can also text the word quit guide to the number 44222 if you're in the US, of course. It doesn't really work anywhere outside of the US. But if you're in the US on your mobile phone and you'd like that guide, text the word quit guide to the number 44222 or you can go to jameswanick.com slash guide. If you'd like to schedule a free 15-minute call with one of my top coaches, just an exploratory call to see if or how we can help you, then you can go to jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word PROJECT90 to the number 44222 if you're listening in the US on a mobile phone. That's jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word PROJECT90, that's one word, PROJECT90, to the number 44222. 
Feel free to send me a direct message over on my Instagram account, which is at James Swanick. You can also watch video episodes of this podcast and a series of other educational videos on my YouTube channel, which is James Swanick One, or you can direct message me on Facebook at James Swanick Official. And finally, a request. Would you please now write a short review of the podcast inside of the Apple Podcast app on your phone or on iTunes on your desktop? Computer. Would you please give the show five stars and write a quick one or two sentence review? This will help the show get in front of even more listeners, potentially transforming someone's life. You can rate and review the show inside of your Apple Podcast app on your phone or over on iTunes on your desktop. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you next time.